vacation today. We actually showed up to your office instead of you coming to my office because I wanted you to feel more like, like at home. So do you feel comfortable? Oh yeah, I'm comfortable. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm comfortable anywhere I'm at. Well, baby. good. My chairs that in my office are like short, fluffy chairs, and I couldn't really see you in that chair. So that's why we're here. Okay, uh, sure. Also, I invited Dad to be on the podcast because, you know, y'all lived a lot of life before I was ever in the picture. I thought he could maybe bring up some some more Uncle Cy facts than I know. And then, of course, Christian's in, and you just laughed hysterically at well, how he looks good. in headphones. Well, <laughs> so he's already getting bullied. He's already like, why am I here? Cy, si, let me translate that about our office. It's really clean, and so you're out. <laughs> oh. She was scared you would mess it up. So when she says your office, which is the duck, which is not even his office, he's rarely here. <laughs> oh, I was always in charge here, son. You just didn't ever know it. You were in charge? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, he's shoot. already starting. He's uh, already, already starting. Start. Start. Oh, he's already starting. This is why I wanted you two here. But I have to ask you the question that I ask everybody who comes on the podcast. Are you ready for this? You probably don't know this because you've never listened to my podcast, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> so well, with that being said, I probably no, I'm not ready for this. All right, get ready. It is, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever been given? You can think about it. That would be because when I was out, when the show was going on full blast, I got asked that every time right before we left. And I would always tell them, you know, learn to laugh at yourself, okay? Don't, don't take everything so serious. That's Life so is too short, okay? And we live in a mean and cruel world. Yeah, that's... That's good. I'm actually really shocked. You were prepared for that. Well, I actually wanted to ask you about that anyways because everybody thinks that you're hilarious because you are hilarious. But the main question I get asked, especially in the height of the show, is the question, is Uncle Cy really that crazy? To which I always say, yes, you're crazier in person because the show only shows 22 minutes, but you're like this 24-7. So how do you learn to laugh at yourself? Were you and Poe Phil always as crazy as you are now? Well, uh, like I said, okay, I had uh, four brothers and two sisters, okay, and growing up to say I had a identity crisis is an understatement because hmm. Ever in school and everything I did, okay, the reply was always, "Well, Jimmy Frank wouldn't have done it that way, or Judy wouldn't have done it that way," mm. you know. And I was going, "Hey, I'm not Jimmy Frank. I'm not Judy." Yeah. That's so good. you know, but everybody takes uh, everybody takes everything too serious. That's true. That's okay? true. It, look, worry. And, like, if you take everything too serious, that's worry. Yeah. Like, he's a businessman. <laughs> he worries too much. <laughs> okay. But on his good side, okay, he's the biggest prankster in our in the Robertson family. It's true. No, oh, for sure. Hey, okay. first off, I don't worry. The yeah, only thing do. that worried me about business was you were part of my business, <laughs> well, which kind of worried me. That's worry. Right. Okay? Having but, to depend on you, it was a little worrisome. Hey, I've always been dependable. <laughs> That's why I feel when I, the, all the other people that down there at Duck Commander when we was at Phil's house, I'd be over there sleeping after we had a big meal from Miss K, and everybody else would go to work. And he would just say, hey, leave me alone. Or, Do you need some reads? And they'd say, no. And I said, hey, he's doing his job. Leave him alone. <laughs> I was actually just telling Christian, uh, we were talking about memories that I have with you. And I was talking about how before the show even, I remember we'd be down there at Memo Camp of Off Fields when Duck Commander was down there. And every single afternoon after lunch, you really would take a nap. Oh, oh no. And what you don't know, though, is me, Reed, Cole, and Jelly would hide behind Memo K's kitchen table and wait for you to wake up because 99% of the time you had gas when you woke up. <laughs> and we would wait for you to fart. <laughs> That's a true story. That's a true story. The one time when you was little, we, we he had a poker game. I showed up early, and I'm dealing the cards out for yeah. all five people. You're watching, and I'm talking to all five of them. <laughs> I and remember you, that. You, you asked mom and dad, tell me, what's wrong with Uncle Sam? 
He's in there and he dealt five hands and he's saying, Hey, it's your bid or fold. Do whatever you're gonna do, but do it now. <laughs> well, first of all, no, you show up at the house, nobody was there except for me and my babysitter. And we thought somebody broke in the house and we were like, Oh my gosh, somebody's in the house, we can hear them talking in there. And so we sneak around the corner and we look in and it's you and you're dealing five hands out to yourself and you're saying, I fold, Jack and we're like <laughs> What is happening? (laughs) I like how Sadie is, uh, I like the advice that he gave. Learn to laugh at yourself. Like like you had to learn that side. I mean, that has to be natural, right? For you to laugh at yourself because, I mean, Probably with me. No, no, probably with me. No, I would say it had to do because, like I said, okay, I really did have an identity crisis because nobody would say, hey, uh, Sal, what about it? Yeah, you know, it was always, uh, hey, Tommy wouldn't do that. You know, especially with the teachers, okay? You got to understand, the teachers at the high school taught my whole family, okay? Jimmy Frank, Harold, Judy, Tommy, Phil, and then me. And it was always, I always, it was, well, good grief, so-and-so wouldn't do that. And I'm going, hey, I ain't so-and-so, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but uh, yeah. but your other siblings are really smart, so maybe well, hey, maybe look, <laughs> look at don't go there, dummy. <laughs> dummy. <laughs> maybe it was the teacher okay. just going like, "Look, your your yeah. siblings are really hey, like I'll put it this way: <laughs> they're educated idiots, okay, just like you are, okay. Just because they got a piece of paper, okay, <laughs> saying they're smart." Don't mean do this right, Jack. Because you you didn't get that paper, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, it took me it took me about three days going to college to figure out, okay, that they're they're wasting six years or eight years of your life just to hand you a piece of paper, and then when you go get a job, here's the first thing out of the guy that's interviewing you. Oh, I'm sorry, we can't use you. You're too educated. Is that what you thought? <laughs> no, it ain't what I thought. <laughs> I had friends, okay, your friends, and some older ones, okay. They had degrees, and guess where they was working? They had a BA and a master's degree, and I said, hey, where you do, what are you doing now? He said, I'm down at uh, McDonald's flipping hamburgers, but I'm going to work my way up to be a manager. <laughs> you know, so I looked and said, wait a minute, why would I waste four years of my life just for some idiot that's got a piece of paper to tell me, oh, you're too educated. I can't hire you. Uh, well, Sai, you, you may have should have talked to other people besides that one person. Hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, there was more than one. Okay, but hey, look here. What, hey, it hey, all worked out. It works out because, hey, guess who runs this country? It ain't the educated idiots. Okay, it's the ordinary common man that's down there and getting the job done. Well, hey, hey okay. and side. That's getting what makes this world done. turn, boy. You, you are running hey. this country. Y'all, I'm so excited. I got a new FabFitFun box in. If you've never heard of FabFitFun, it is incredible. There's seasonal boxes that come right to your door with all types of things. And this box is the spring box. And their theme actually is Grow Forth, which is really cool for me because, as we know, I am growing a lot right now and growing a sweet little baby. And she is coming forth very soon. And so this box is going to be very personal for me and pretty fun. My sisters and I have always loved FabFitFun. My mom loves loves it. My grandma loves it. And it's just so fun to get a box in the mail of goodies. So this box I know has a lot of self-care, rejuvenation um, things as we're talking about growing forth. And so I'm going to actually open my box for y'all and show you a few things in it. So FabFitFun always has a magazine based on the season that we're in. That's always so fun and cute. And they also have coupons like HelloFresh. They have coupons for a lot of different things. So you're really getting a huge deal when you get FabFitFun because you're getting one box with everything in it across the board. So I haven't actually opened my box yet. So this would be a surprise to me and you. Oh, this looks amazing. Aloe infused gel line socks. You guys, I actually need this because my feet are so swollen. If you notice, I can't even wear my wedding ring anymore because it's my hands are so swollen. So it's every day. I don't know if I'm going to be able to wear it or not. And my feet are definitely taking on that track. 
and some other goodies for my feet, some amazing slippers. So all kinds of fun stuff. And I also range across the board. So I got stuff for my feet, but also check this out. This is so cute. Little hair clippies from each. They have incredible brands too that they work with. Um, Oh, cute. This is a four pack of gold foil lip mask because why not? Everybody needs a good old lip mask, right? I, I love chapsticks, so that's gonna be great. Here is a clean hair mask. So I'm telling you, they literally have everything. And some of their stuff is pretty big like this. This is doo -doo -doo -doo, a cosmetic organizer case. And I love trying to organize my drawers. I've actually been really intentional about that lately, trying to get everything ready for baby. So, so great. They have so many fun things. Um, a face moisturizer. They have all types of things to rejuvenate your skin and just add to your self-care. FabFitFun has always been one of my favorite things to get. So you need to go sign up for FabFitFun right now and get the spring box. Order your spring box today. Go sign up now and you can snag a Amazing products like the lip mask I showed you with the aloe socks when you customize. Use coupon code WOE10 for $10 off your first box at www.fabfitfun.com. Remember, use coupon code WOE10, that's WOE10, WOE10 for $10 off your first box at www.fabfitfun.com. Sadie, were you going to ask me my advice again? Or was that just for Sai? That was just for Sai, <laughs> but do you want to Well, share? yeah, because I was what? really panicked you were going to ask uh -oh. me. Because if you've been on the show more than once, if you get the same question. So I actually went back and listened to the first because one I did you you to see what advice thing. I gave. See, yeah, he's done I was like, research. He yeah, I did that. research. So, But I wanted to give another. I've got another piece of good advice if I get invited back. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to use that one. Well, but, you can, you, so you're not You can answer it, it now. No, I don't want to share that one. I'm going to save that one. Oh, save I'm just, that one. Like oh, I'm just, had me on I'm just No, no, dying. but I have another. No, I'm just dying to figure out what you're going anyway, to say. You, you won't, you won't Let me know. One. I'm going to give you another piece of advice that was given to me. <laughs> so give us a piece. when I take over Duck Commander, so I'm the new boss, and I'm looking at payroll, and I'm, you know, we got to cut. Like, like, we're not making enough money. And so I look down there, and size on the payroll. Well, I, I. I was trying to figure out who do we keep, who keeps going. <laughs> so I've got uh, Sa who basically sleeps on the couch for four hours every day at work, which is we're working in the house, right? And I thought, look, well, you know, I hate to be the CEO side of it. Yeah, you know, I got to, I got to trim the, I got to trim the fat or lack thereof. And so I go to Phil and I say, Phil, we need to let Sa go, like. I mean, I just, the word, the productivity is not there. <laughs> and Phil gives me this advice. He said, leave Cy alone. Uh, he makes the reads when he's awake and nobody else wants to make the reads. So just leave him alone. He'll be fine. I'm like, oh man. Okay. We'll keep Cy. But then as it turns out, when the show that happens, the when Doug Dynasty, Sai still turn. there. <laughs> Everybody gets to meet Sai. Had, it, had oh, I shoot. done what I was gonna do, Sai, you would have been. You wouldn't even been a Duck Commander. It's true. And so the one of the best piece of advice I got was to leave Sai leave alone. Si. You never yeah. know that 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 jewel that's right there. You may overlook a it, diamond, and a we have no idea, Sai. Si, you, you were a diamond in the real that's rough, right. like really yeah. rough. Hey, now that rough. is crazy to think about, and that is good advice. So on that note, did you ever, ever, ever think in your life that you would be as famous as you became? No. No. I mean, and, and for you, I mean, obviously you can say it to yourself too, but would you have ever thought that Uncle Cy would be as no. famous? <laughs> not, no, I, I, not it. That wouldn't even enter his mind. Okay. I'll tell you. So, let's, so here's how the story goes. So I end up keeping Cy on. And it wasn't because it, it wasn't anything personal, Cy. So just we didn't have any money. And so then I start making uh, a TV show. Like we're still doing the video. So I'm having a video. But I thought we can't video Cy. Like he's too awkward. Nobody's gonna get it. And so I was filming around him. So we'd be in the duck blind, and I would just film around. Cy. Oh no, no! I was always camera shy because when you point at my face, well, you wouldn't say anything. Well, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Right? He was like a, you, like the turtle. I mean, the the frog on uh, uh, 
Tom and Jerry. You know, no. that would, every time the spotlight hits, and no. he just would why, croak. Why were you so nervous? It was say it was say you didn't understand. Okay. Nobody had brought out the green stuff oh yet. Oh, my God. Okay. I was paying you green stuff Yeah, to but sleep. you was paying me peanuts, son. Hey. <laughs> Nobody was paying me what I was worth. Okay? Well, they, uh, now I'm starting oh, to hey. see the McDonald's thing coming oh, no, no, back. No, Nobody no, no. would pay you what you were That's worth. That's right. That's right. That's why I didn't flip hamburgers. Okay? Well, I mean, I was trying to get you to audition. You wouldn't say right. anything. And so it wasn't until I put right. a hidden camera on the table and I covered it up. And we were watching the footage. <laughs> And you just come to life. I'm like, that's the guy. And I had a hidden camera, and wow. we ran it. We 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 showed the footage of you. I know, see, and saying I didn't, you killed I didn't even, everything. I didn't even know it. I wouldn't have done that. I know. Okay. That's crazy. And that's how right. that's how really the first time I wow. saw that. And then when they actually came to do Duck Dynasty, Sal wasn't even on the list. Wow. It just had the couples. And then I, I called him back. I said, Hey. uh, Y'all need to check out Uncle Si. And they go, well, we, here's what they said, Si. We may use him from time to time yeah, on the show. Yeah, yeah. And then they met you. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and and then, then they, they said, didn't have enough room. Not, and then they started paying you, I guess, what you were more worth. What you were, yeah. what you were worth. accustomed to. That's exactly okay, so how, that's what I was worth. I, okay, obviously the green stuff, you know, helped oh, yeah. you. But how did you go from being so nervous that you wouldn't do anything on camera? And obviously, even in your childhood, feeling like you're the one that – Nobody understands to literally singing three songs on a platinum selling album. You are the main character of Duck Dynasty. You speak everywhere. Like, where did the confidence all of a sudden come from? I've always, I've always had. It. You just you got to no no. You got to understand. Okay, the Robertson family are most of them. Feels not really. Feel likes the limelight. Okay. The rest of us are pretty good storytellers, but I'm the best of them, the storytellers. <laughs> <laughs> because hey, because your stories are not always Because true. you make them up? <laughs> no, it ain't, it ain't that. Hey, I done told you, I wrote a book. It's 95% true, 5% just to give it a little punch. You know? <laughs> At least you admit it. But hey, you asked a good question because here I got one for you and him. Okay. 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 Did you ever dream that you would be what you are? Okay, Never. because of the show. Wow. Never. I mean, no. Dancing with the Stars. Dancing no. with the Stars. Because yeah. I wasn't even on the list at the beginning either. It was uh -uh. John Luke and Cole were the two kids. Yeah. And then somehow I made it on, I think because of the prom dress video, that the yeah. prom dress episode that y'all were both in. And then that really hit. And people I don't really remember liked that. It. You don't remember the prom you dress? You remember prom dress? That's when you were me? dancing with the mannequin up at the oh, dress Oh, okay. Now, yeah. 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 Now, that was now a funny. that you spark my okay. memory. That okay. was, that was really one. my first kind of episode. And then when we went driving, and that was my first time to ever drive, and I drove with you, and I was terrible. <laughs> oh, remember that? <laughs> that was the first day back from shooting. Remember? Right. We just, that was the first episode, right. and it was like 105 degrees. Yes, it was Camera so hot. guys are passing out. And I literally had no idea what I was doing, and I actually kept hitting the little duck decoys. Yeah. And I was like, I cannot, I, I really don't know how to drive. Somebody actually has to teach me. So that was really what did it. But then Dancing with the Stars happened because they asked you to be on, and you said no. And Mom was like, well, Sadie can do it. I wasn't. So they asked me to do it, and then they said you get paid. So I looked at how much you got paid, and I'm like, well, hey. Well, I, I, yeah, open I, think about it. But yeah. I never watched the show. Then I watched like five minutes of the show, and I was like, heck no, I'm not doing that at all. <laughs> so I passed, yeah. and then I think that was the way it was meant to be Yeah, for you I, to come on. and. It's crazy. Would well, you ever you, do Dancing with the Stars? Number one, no. They asked me. <laughs> no, no, they asked me, and I said, no. Uh -uh. I said, hey, I done watched. That's for young people. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Even without all the problems I got, no, I could pull that off. Y'all, have you ever heard of Feature Socks? Feature Socks are super legit. Look, I'll show you right now. They have super cute colors. I got purple, blue, pink. I have the no-show. All different types of all different types of socks because Features is absolutely obsessed with making the perfect sock so that once you put it on your foot, you don't have to think about it because how many of you know that whenever your socks are slipping and sliding off of you and you have blisters all day, that's all you can think about. But you shouldn't have to think about your socks. They want you to be comfortable from head to toe and they really worked on that in a great way. For me, I play a lot of tennis, like to go on a lot of walks and especially playing tennis, your foot's moving a lot. So it's super easy for a sock to slide off. So these you can see are nice and snug in the back. 
and will stay on great. They also have a seamless toe, so it's not really annoying. Um, all in all, they were just a great pair of socks. And for you to perform your best, I think that you should have the best socks out there. And Features certainly is at the top of the game. Not to mention, they have a lifetime guarantee. Features are so durable and long lasting that if you're unsatisfied at any point, they'll give you a replacement pair, no questions asked. Features is challenging you to try a pair, and if they're not the best socks you've ever worn, they'll take them back. That's pretty cool, y'all. They are so confident that you will love their socks that they're gonna also give the Whoa That's Good listeners ten dollars off your first pair of features when you go to features.com slash whoa. That's F E E T U R E S dot com slash whoa W H O A for ten dollars off your first purchase pair of features. Okay, so I want to ask you a question, and and we need your advice, me and Christian. So, you know, when the show started, to everyone's surprise, pretty much every girl in America had a crush on Uncle Cy, which I don't know how that happened, but it happened. But people don't know you've been married for so long. Like, how long have the you been fifth, married? The, April the seventh will be fifty years. Oh my gosh, fifty, 50 years! years. That's fifty awesome. years so that's to that mean redhead I'm married to. She, she needs to write a book called Fifty Years. Yeah. With oh yeah, yeah. No, no, <laughs> that won't say, put you in the loony bin. No, nothing. No, will. no, because everybody, everybody <laughs> asked her, "Yo, well, why aren't you on the show?" And they asked me, they said, "Why aren't your wife on the show?" I said, "Because number one, she's a lot smarter than all of us." Okay, she don't want no part of it. But the real reason is she said, hey, I have to live with him. Hey, okay? that's true. So I don't need to be on the show. <laughs> she needed a break. Uh, so what, what's your marriage advice for me and Christian 50 years down the road? Never go to bed after an argument. Hmm. I love that. That's, that's good. That's awesome. No, no, I'm serious. Don't go to bed if you're arguing. You know, you just have to come together and say, hey, look, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this. Yeah. You got to watch that, though. One time I stayed up for two and a half weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, think no, about that. no, no. Well, in that case, I, I put that there in here. Corey is hard-headed as you are. Okay? <laughs> yeah, that's Y'all, true. That's true. Nobody that's wants true. to kill here. That's true. Yeah. No, most of it is uh, that, and then you got to communicate. Yeah. Okay? It's good. You can't just quit and say, okay, oh, you, you made me mad. Well, Sure, you're going to make you mad. You're two individuals, for crying out loud. Yep. Yeah. That's so, good. Yeah. We'll take it. Yeah, that's and great. And the laughter part comes into play in the marriage. That's good. Okay. Don't take yourself it's too It's always seriously. easier to laugh at stuff you do, especially once you get like me and Christine. Old age is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. We do stuff <laughs> Now and then just bust out laughing. And then nothing <laughs> said. We just, we do something and we both bust bust out laughing. That's hilarious. Because, you know, it's you know, it just because we know each other so well. That's awesome. It's, it's ridiculous. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Right, that's really good yeah. advice. Christian, what did you think of Uncle Si when you first met him? Well, I remember the first time I met you was when I was interning for Duck Commander that summer that we got engaged and we were traveling so much that I, I wasn't actually here that much. Um, but I was building duck calls with Jay and you walked in and I thought that you were the funniest person I've ever met. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was like 15 minutes maybe. You were in and out real quick, but I thought you were hilarious. Dad, what do you remember about Uncle Cy growing up? Because you have all kinds of crazy stories. Uh, Cy, uh, I remember he gave us all his uh, army stuff, uh, the clothes. Oh, that's cool. Which had Robertson, which was really cool. We were super poor, so <laughs> like we were like we had our name on our camo <laughs> right. shirt that was too big for us when we were in fifth grade. Uh, the sleeping blankets uh, with the real uh, feathers in them, and you gave us those. Uh, I remember we commandeered your truck, the Nissan. Oh yeah, no, you didn't commandeer. I gave it. I gave it to Phil. Well, I said, hey. I know, and then. Jason and I commandeered it, well, and that was our rig. We drove around. We drove it till it just finally wore <laughs> slap out. That was actually a good truck. It really was. Oh, yeah. It was a yeah. five-speed. Yeah. Corey would ride in the back. Uh, that had the little seats that folded down, yeah. and so we yeah. would go around town. And, yeah, we I remember your truck. But, yeah, I mean, Sal was always funny and, you know, awesome. just like he is now. And uh, But not like I've watched him over time. Then he really – you know, just start really coming out of that shell too. I think it was probably tough with you with your 
with your older siblings. No, I mean, no. It's kind of yeah, difficult to sure. really come out, especially someone like Phil, because he's so dominating. No, no. All of them are dominating. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. It was you know, a Judy, dominating family. It was. You know, because you know, it just, and, and here's what's funny. I didn't even realize that I had the identity crisis to Phil's son, oldest son, Al, said, hey, I want you to do a sermon, you know, for church. Mm-hmm. So I got looking in, doing all this stuff, and I, uh, it took me like f- a month. You know, he told me it, it, it's up a month away. It took me the whole month because I, I was chasing rabbits. Every time I'd read something, I'd oh, yeah, that's what I want to do. And I'd get going down there, and then it would just go blank, and I'd go, God, no, I can't do it. Yeah. And that's when I come to the conclusion that you never did exist from, you know, like from a child to high school, you know, because everybody was always, well, hey, you know, Harold wouldn't do it that way, Judy, Tommy, Phil, mm-hmm. none of them would do it that way. You know, and mm-hmm. I was sitting over here going, jumping up and down, talking about, hey, I ain't them. Yep. You know? Yeah. It's you like know, they couldn't see me. You're actually, like, such a good example of our whole message, Live Original, which is, like, my whole ministry, everything we talk about. And it's becoming confident in the original person that you were created to be because so many of us compare ourselves to everyone around us and we don't feel like we're good enough and we don't feel like we're worth, you know, anything. Hey, all that, yeah. Yeah, and like what you experience is the same that so many people experience. But it's so cool that you share that because so many people look at you and they're like, that's Uncle Side. That's, you know, my hero. That's my favorite TV personality. That's, you know, the person. But you went through all the struggles everybody else did. Yeah, but that's the thing, okay? And and again, back to your marriage, like your deal. <clears throat> don't put, don't you put him on a pedestal because he's going to fail you. Mm-hmm. And don't you put her on a pedestal because she's going to fail you. Yep. You're human beings. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what people do, you know. That's why, that's the wildest part of this, and I've got the greatest answer in the world of why I am who I am Mm -hmm. is because of the Almighty. That's good. Preach. Okay, no, I got chill bumps all on because it's just, you know. That's why when I'm, I'm out talking to people about Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> and after I get through talking about them, I hear this way too often. I can't see this God you're talking about, Uncle Si. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I actually feel sorry for you because everywhere I go, mm. I see him. I see him in a in a rose bush. You know, the the uh, a honeybee. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for the honeybee and the insects, guess what, folks? There would be no fruit. Yeah. Okay, vegetables, all that stuff. <clears throat> That's God, little creatures that he created yeah. doing all this, you know. So you need to open your eyes and take it all in and use your brain that God gave you. Mm-hmm. Good grief. The animal kingdom, the fish kingdom, the bird kingdom, you know. They got, I don't even remember what it was. I saw it on Nature Show on TV. They got these huge parrots. Now, I think it's South America somewhere. They're gorgeous. Bright red, yellow, blue, and everything. You know, just, you know, he's a creator of beauty. Yep. You know, and I, I've gone to preaching. Besides, <laughs> I, I went it. to preach. Yeah. I wonder if they're, I wonder if they get tickled at you in heaven, like looking down at what he created. Some of your oh, no, stories. no, look, God's got a great sense of humor. Well, obviously. Oh, yeah. He, he made yeah. you, so. Yeah. He made that brain. <laughs> look, and it. here's the good thing about it I'm unique, and so are you. And so is she, so is he. That's yeah. it. Period. Yeah. Hey, so si, tell me this, though. So, Paul, who is your dad, my grandpa, I heard Paul say like 100 words in his entire life to me. So he didn't say much. Now, was that. Is that the way he was, or was he always kind of quiet? Or I'm wondering, like, I'm seeing a lot of dynamic personalities come out of the family. Yeah. But if you hung out with Paul, he just didn't say much. That's it. You had to get to know him, or he had to get to know you. Yeah. So when you were young, was he pretty quiet, or was he? No, no. He was always that way. That was like, you know, I seen him 
<clears throat> Daddy never laughed out loud. Wow. You know, Tommy was the same way. You know, Daddy would, <clears throat> I seen him twice actually fall off a couch, hit the floor, and he looked like he's having an epilepsy fit. He's got crocodile tears coming out of his eyes. He's shaking all over, and ain't a sound coming out of him. He did it with Red Skeleton, and he did it with the Groucho Marx. <laughs> okay, look, and look, they said stuff, okay, and I'm not going to repeat. The, the screen of the TV went blank. And then we read in the paper, like, you know, a week later, Red Skeleton gets to sue $300,000, you know, uh, Groucho Marx gets sued three hundred thousand oh, dollars for inappropriate, inappropriate. language. Inappropriate. Yeah, but Paul thought it was funny. Yeah. Oh no. You know, Mama would come running in because all you heard was thud going. She coming in, James. You are. Right? He does. You know. <laughs> so you had to get to know him, but he was he was quiet. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, from growing up, like you know, uh, this is childhouse childhood stories. You know. Phil was always center of tension for the family. Yeah. Okay. Even from, back then. No, no. From from my viewpoint. Right. Okay. So finally, I, you know, me and Dad's in a duck blind by ourselves, and uh, I just bring it up, you know. I said, well, Phil's your favorite, you know. Oh, wow. No, you know, we had that conversation. He said, no, you're misinformed. You know, and I went, what do you mean I'm misinformed? He said, you got your head on straight. He don't. You know, <laughs> so yeah, I have to give him more attention than I give you. Oh, you know, and he just wow. said, he said, you'll understand this once you get married and you have kids. You, you, it'll look like your favorite, you know, favoritism, but it's really not. You're giving the child that needs it the most the attention when he needs it. Wow, hey, that's good parenting advice. Yeah, no, 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 just you know, and that's part of growing up, you know. Now, Granny was not that. Well, Granny seemed to be very outspoken. No, no, that's funny part, okay, because we all have a different outlook on uh, my mother. You know, <laughs> most of the kids think my mother went insane at times. Well, she di clinically did. Well, no, no. That, that's well, the, I mean, that's different <laughs> opinion, okay, from she, everybody. She Look, went to the insane hospital. No, no. But hey, I, all that was was a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta understand. She here's was on medication. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. Here's my viewpoint on that. Oh my goodness. She's married to James H. Robertson, my father. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. okay. And the only way I can describe him and Phil both, okay, is they're hard men. Okay. Uh, you you don't want they don't want to show any kind of emotion. That's a sign of weakness. Yeah. Okay. She was married to Daddy. Okay. She had seven kids. Yeah. Okay. Just think about it. Look at me. <laughs> okay. She had to put up with me. Okay. And then she had to put up six more. Okay. That wouldn't make anybody want to take a break. <laughs> so, hey, she'd finally get fed up with it. And, hey, do something wild. And, hey, daddy, it puts sent her to the hospital. But she had a chemical imbalance, right? Uh, I mean. That's what the doctors say. Okay. Well, aside, My that's, viewpoint is okay. I mean, hey, if I've that's seen, what the doctors say. Hey, I'm just saying I've seen it differently than all the other things, because she would say, "I." But did it. you? Were, were, hang on, you wasn't even. Were you around when she would have her episodes? Yeah. yeah. I mean, she stayed up all night one night crowing with the chickens hey, look. on top of the chicken house. <laughs> Like I, I witnessed that. Hey, well, I never, I never heard that one. You were there. Oh, one hundred percent. I yeah. saw her do well, it. Yeah. I, well, I was like, hey, she had some Christmas lights strung out in the yard. No, they there. weren't Christmas lights. Light. They were, <clears throat> they were like lights, like that. Well, I thought some light of them were Christmas lights. Jason said they had Christmas lights. Jason, didn't know. no, it was well, just outside light bulbs. Okay. Balls. Well, anyway, hey, the boys were walking around shooting twenty twos. She said, "Give me that twenty two boy." And she just started, "Pay up, pay up, pay up." She shot every ball out, she which shot was every impressive. Ball out, that okay? is impressive. So the woman, actually. so the woman could shoot. Okay. She could, hey, y'all got it from someone. Yeah. yeah no, I, right. I would. Well, I mean, she was basically raising me at the time, so I got to see all the. She cleaned the banana. She cleaned the windows with banana. Just smeared bananas <laughs> over every window pane. Oh my gosh! And I'm a little kid, like, oh, what's up with that? That is interesting. And then she painted uh, everything, everything red. square yeah. red. Yeah, yeah. And then when she got home yeah. from being at the hospital, she said, "Who painted all I, this red?" Yeah. Did Dad? Did Dad take her and put her in the hospital? Uh, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, we'll feel. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, okay. hey. So Vacation the, time. Hey, so I, uh, I was sitting there with. <laughs> so so Paul Paul is sitting there playing solitaire, right? He got a Winston yeah. hanging out of his mouth <laughs> and one burning in the ashtray. Right? She, she just walked by and grabbed every card on the table except for the ones in his hand, and threw all the cards in the fireplace. What? And Paul just looks and looks. No. At, and and Daddy, Paul, Paul yeah. goes, oh, bull. <laughs> <laughs> and he just went back to smoking a cigarette. No, no. You got to understand, because okay, cause I'm moving forward to my mom lived to be 94, okay? She told me she was 96. Uh, 94. I thought she was 97. Yeah. No, she told 94. me 96. 94. Anyway, but anyway. <laughs> so I check that. She would go on vacation to the nut house, okay? <laughs> okay, to get away from James H. Robinson and seven kids, okay? Go fake, take a vacation. Now, you got to understand, that was back in the days that doctors come in, okay, and put wires and then got over and turned the machine on and just turned it up, having a kick watching her jerk with electricity. Do you know for sure that happened? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and that so happened. For sure. I'm just making sure. No, no, yeah, okay. So you got to understand, she was 94, and she was just as sharp the day she was born. Okay? That's true. Okay, she was on prices Right when she was 84. She okay? won and, the whole thing. And won a two, two things. She won both two showcases. Yeah, she yeah. won both showcases. Okay, and she wasn't close to what the items were. Bob Barker would say, Matt, how much is that right there? You know, how much is that bottle of shampoo? Three ninety nine there, Bob. Boom. Three ninety nine. Yeah. Oh, she was in, I watched it with her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, wow. Harold and Mary Harold and Mary took her up there. Yeah. You know, she had a blast doing it. But I mean I, I just <clears throat> that's why I've got my viewpoint of mama and her her craziness. Okay, all the rest of the kids got their viewpoint, okay. And then if you go and bring in the police and say, Okay, we got ten witnesses to this shooting. And they get the story, and they get ten different stories. Okay, so hey, that's why eyewitness reports are no good. Well, and yeah. consider the source yeah. on you calling anybody crazy. Well, so, <laughs> hey, look, like I, I like though that you you know you see everybody for who they are and let them be who they are because today we're very quick to diagnose everybody for everything, mm -hmm. and it's kind of nice to say you know what she went through some stuff. She had some moments. Certainly, she, you know, rubbed bananas in windows and threw cards in the fire pit, but she was a good woman, and she raised you well. Well, no, no, because here's the thing about it, okay? In this world, okay, anytime you see anything happen or you have an argument or something, you might want to go into the bathroom or somewhere where a mirror is and turn around and say, okay, what is your part in this? Mm-hmm. Did you have any part in this doing, making it what was happening, happening? Yeah. Yeah. Because, hey, whatever he did, can you change? Can you change him? No. Where he wouldn't do it? Nope. Nope. The only person you can make a difference in is, hey, what can I do for you today? That's good. Oh, here's what I'm going to do for me today. I'm going to try to do everything I do. I'm going to be good, and, and it's going to be right. It's going to be the right thing to do at the right time. That's good. I'm going to be good, and it's going to be right. No, no. Come That's on. That's good advice. Well, I do want to tell one more, one of my favorite size stories. What I'd be it? remiss if I didn't tell this story. So, Duck Dynasty hits. It's a big hit, and um, I was driving out to Fields, and you passed by size uh, house-ish. Uh, uh, so I'm house-ish. So, I, so I had like a hundred people a day coming to his house, right? I mean, every day. And so I would open the door, just chitty chat, like you know. Like fans? Oh, fans. Yeah, just every day. So what? I drive past and I thought, golly, man, that's got to get old. And I thought, I'm going to do something nice for Sai. I was going to wake up and do something good for you, no, Sai. No. So I said, Sai, I'm going to put you up a fence. Just, I was thinking along the highway, just like a wooden <laughs> fence, you know, just so you couldn't see directly. And so, uh, so I said, yeah, I appreciate that. And so I told my uh, accountant, I said, hey, Sai's so going to get a fence up and pay for it. So, um, so she comes back about a month later and says, uh, hey, I just want to make sure you're, am I good to pay this bill? 
And I thought, why is she calling me to pay a like? <laughs> yeah. Okay. In my mind, thousand bucks, twelve hundred bucks. You know, wooden. <laughs> she goes, well, it's uh thirty two thousand dollars, and what? I just wanted to make sure. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa! It's already installed. So I go out there. Sa has put a fence, like you have never seen. He had to tell the fence person. You do whatever you want to do. Willie's paying for it, nope, right? No, no, no. what he's worth. I mean, me, there's a fence no, no. inside that there's like a No, no, let me correct driveway. that. Let me correct that. My it, wife was in charge of that project, oh okay? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They, okay, it's a it's a <laughs> mobile home. <laughs> Don't, hey, it ain't a mobile home. <laughs> it's a prefab. Craig okay, home would I'm be so rolling sorry. over. I'm so sorry. It's a prefab <laughs> home, which is yeah. a nice, lovely home, but yeah. the- the fence almost rivals the cost of the <laughs> there's fences on the inside, outside, back. And that I was thought, there well, I said, okay, well, you got me. So I hung one on me on that one. It was my fault. I should have been more clear as to what I was thinking. I thought, oh, well. So I go to Si, and I'm thinking, well, at least, at least Si got the nicest fence in West Monroe now. And Si goes, man, I appreciate that fence. Scott's going to love it. <laughs> He was moving. It wasn't what? even where he stayed. He no. put another place on the other side of the street, and to this day, there's still not a fence around your place. And, and my cousin no, no. has the nicest fence. And it no, wasn't no. for you. That was the funniest part of the story. No, no, well, that's where I was living at the time. But no, here's the thing. <laughs> and look, mine's got three quarters of fence around it, and I, I was checking into it, and I got the the, the roundabout driveway and i was gonna have to put up two gates on the roundabout <laughs> and when I, I looked at the price of them i said uh-uh i'll put so, up with the fans coming this evening so, so when look, i, I still you have, were like oh no i put a fence up everywhere <laughs> <laughs> now that is right oh, no, no, the, the secretary when she told me about him hitting the roof back <laughs> That was so funny. <laughs> he said, I expected like $2,000. That's what I thought. A wooden like, fence, you know. I didn't even he know said, fences yeah. went that high. It's it's vinyl. I, I, I still, I, it floors me today. And I still, every time I drive by it, I think about it. Because now nobody's even living. It's just a... It, oh, you, no, just, it ain't. Tina lives there. Oh, wow. Well, lady taking care of my wife. Okay. Well, Tina has a nice fence. She's got, she's got a nice fence. Tina is protected. <laughs> That's right. She's got the fence. That is hilarious. Well, I have loved this. Uncle Si, it's fun to hear more stories about you and from you. Uh, plus, you gave so much good advice. I love how you'll be laughing and being a little crazy one second, and the next second you'll drop a bomb. Hey. Crazy is fun. Crazy is fun. It is. It's fun. Let the world know it. Well, thank you for being on the Well That's Good podcast and spending some time with us today, Uncle Si. My pleasure. Oh, hello. Hi. Hey. Hey, Hey, yeah, this is Sadie and Christian. Hi, how are you guys? So good. How are you? Good. Happy Wednesday. This is so awesome. I'm so excited to join you guys today. I know. I'm so excited. And we're even talking on Well, That's Good Wednesday. It's perfect. Yes. It's perfect. Well, remind me of your name. My name is Lucero. I knew it. Lucero, that's such a beautiful name. I know we we didn't want to pronounce it wrong. So I wanted to ask. I was right right on the enunciation. So beautiful. Well, what was the question that you sent in? Yeah, so the question that I sent in, I think it was a week ago, is what are some practical things that you can do to be reminded of God's faithfulness? Mm, what a great question. It's a great question. It makes me think of uh, Promises. Have you heard of Promises, the song about Maverick City? I don't think so, no. Oh, you got to go listen to it. No, it's one of the uh, best. It's basically just talking about God's faithfulness, and it talks about like from the rising sun to the setting same, um, I will praise your name is kind of the chorus of it. It's like... From the morning to the evening, I'm going to praise your name because of your faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whenever I think of God's faithfulness and just practical ways to remind yourself is literally to, you know, whenever the, um, I think it's in the book of Joshua. Yeah. Whenever they're crossing the Jordan River and we know the story, whenever they're crossing, they stop and they pick up 12 stones and these stones are their memorial. They're making a memorial. They're literally standing in the river, holding up the stones, saying like, this is going to be our memory of what God has done today, allowing us to pass through the Jordan River. And I think that can teach us a lot about how sometimes in life when God does something extraordinary and there's a faith 
faithfulness to God, it's so important to make a marker of those moments. Like if it's a stone, if it's writing in your journal, if it's taking a piece, like even if you go, maybe it's like you go to a passion conference and you keep your lanyard, like keeping things that just remind you of the time that God really showed up in a powerful way. I even think social media can be that in a sense, like when you post pictures and you share captions of what God's done, like you're just like setting, um, you know, kind of picking up a stone in the middle of the Jordan saying, this is what God has done in my life. And I think that those are the things that help you be reminded of them is whenever you really make a moment out of them. Um, but that's for me. Christian, what about you? Yeah. Well, I love, I love what you said about markers. I think, I think that's so true and so important for me. Um, the way that I, you know, oftentimes look at, look at God's faithfulness over my life is just remembering back to, um, you know, where I was before I knew Jesus, where I was when I first encountered Jesus and, and kind of that, 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 that moment in time when, when I had that conversion of how my life has changed since then, how much more scripture I know, how much more, you know, better of a person I feel like how yeah. all the fruits of the spirit that, that I, that I feel like my life is, is, is starting to embody. Um, and that's when I think back to God's faithfulness from how much he's brought me from when I was lost, to when I was found, to when mm-hmm. I was, um, you know, living in sin to where I'm, I'm, I'm walking in freedom. And I just look back to those markers in my life where well, I saw God show up in this. I saw myself, um, stop struggling with this then and, and, and kind of looking, looking through those yeah. periods of life through, yep. throughout my walk. So basically, you're reminded of God's faithfulness when you look in the mirror. You say, hello. Yep. Yep. I'm like, hey, what's up? Hello. No, and, and I'll just say one more thing on that is there, there are some things in life where God's faithfulness is like loud and it's huge and you see it and you're like, this is when he did that. This is when he did that. And then there are some other moments in life where – you're like, okay, God, like, am I hearing you? I'm not seeing you. I'm mm-hmm. not, you know, nothing crazy's happening. I don't feel like my prayers are being answered. And I actually felt like that kind of when COVID happened, the pandemic happened and, you know, everything was closed and everything was getting canceled. And I remember, Christian, you'll remember this too, when we moved into back to Louisiana and everything had just changed. And I honestly just kind of felt like, a lot of the prayers that we had prayed that we thought were getting answered just all of a sudden weren't. Like a lot of the ways that God was speaking really loudly, all of a sudden he was quiet. And I remember every night when the sun would set, <laughs> don't you remember, I would get emotional, like in, in a good way, because it was just a reminder that God is still moving. And every day when I woke up and the sun was out, I would get like this gratitude of like, okay, it's a new day. And it was like, even though everything's being canceled, even though everything's going crazy, like God, you're still waking up and setting this day. You're still, you know, the sun's still going up, sun's still coming down, and then it's coming up again. You still have the birds coming out and chirping. You still have the trees glorifying you. And if they're still doing it, I'm going to still do it, you know? And so there are some times in life when the faithfulness of God is huge. And there are some times in life where the faithfulness to God requires your perspective to change. Um, And I think when you allow your perspective to change and just see God for the beauty in front of you, you're going to be a much more at peace person. Um, And so I love this question. Thanks for bringing up such a good conversation. Yeah, that's that's, that's such a deep question. I love it. Yeah, no, thanks, guys. I think everything that you guys said are just practical things that anyone can kind of do each day. And just kind of remember, you know, where you have been before, where you are now, and how far God has brought you, and, you know, where you are today. So that's super cool. I love it. Thanks, guys, so much. Yes, well, thanks for calling. I appreciate getting to talk to you over the phone, and thanks for sending in the question. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. girl. That was so good. I love y'all's questions that you send in. It brings up great conversation topics. So don't forget, follow along the Well That's Good podcast Instagram page and DM us any question that you want to get answered. And if we love it and if we want to talk about it, we would love to give you a call. Thanks for following along, guys. And don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, to subscribe to our channel because we do post all the podcasts now. So subscribe to our channel. And if you want to hit the like button, that would be great Hit the too. like button. Hey, why it's not? A, and swipe why, up. Hey, share the love today. Swipe up. Love you guys.